Good. So we are also live on YouTube. Amazing. Thank you, Virginia. You started this on a very high note. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, SC254, welcome aboard. Thank you so much for always being among the first people to log in on my YouTube whenever I go live. Now, today is a very interesting day. First of all, let me start by saying this is Dr. Lewis Muchila from the Health and Wellness Sport. Welcome to this spot where we question health systems, where we air out or we iron out the myths around healthcare, where we bring health at your doorstep and you also shed light on issues uh, that you have always had doubt about healthcare. We also try to bridge the gap between doctors or the healthcare and the general public so that when you get that prescription, you are able to make a sane decision to either take those drugs or not take those drugs. So that is the reason why we exist and we are glad that we are doing good already. So welcome aboard. Alfaya, welcome. So today I'm going to talk about the thyroid, basically the anatomy of the thyroid gland and the physiology. I'm going to talk about the thyroid hormones. When we hear about T3 and T4, what are these? What are their functions in the body? I'm also going to break down uh, hypo and hyperthyroidism. So what are these? And then I'm going to talk about goiter. Is goiter a bad condition? Do we need drugs to manage goiter? Do we need the surgery to get rid of that thyroid? Why are all these things done? And above all, I'm going to air or iron out issues on the Graves disease and the Hashimoto's disease. These are the autoimmune conditions that affect the thyroid gland. So be part of this and take that pen, take that paper. I also have mine. So we'll go step by step, slow and surely, until it sinks into your head so that you get to understand if somebody starts to having the, having that uh, swollen uh, neck, what is the issue? What is causing this? How did they end up here? And how can we reverse it? Okay. So is surgery the only option? Why are women more prone to getting goiter more than women, more than men? Is it that women have high chances to get this? Are they uh, the generation at risk? So be part of this conversation, and I'm sure at the end of this conversation, we will all have the best information and the relevant uh, knowledge that we need to get this in order. So Karibuni Sana, all of you who are here, those who are still logging in, tag somebody in, tag somebody who was Goita, tag somebody who is using Cabimazol, Methimazol, Levothyroxine, the Euthyrox, those people who are using proper thyroxine, certain PTU, tag them here. Let's educate them. Let's help them understand their thyroid functions and how to reverse goiter. So before we start, let me say hi to Safia Gabriel. Welcome aboard. Samburu as usual, Mohammed Mahmoud. Thank you so much for being here. Sanya Jiwan, Alfaya, and SC254. Rudzani Tovhale. I think this is from South Africa. And always... A pleasure having Kekeli Kafui around. My people on TikTok. Haj is also in the house. Already said hi to some people uh, on TikTok. So I guess it's time for us to just sink in and start to understand it slow by slow. Okay? Good. Now, the thyroid gland. What is this? What is this gland? And what is its function in our system? First of all, before I even uh, go ahead... Kindly just wave if, if I'm clear, if my sound is okay, so that we can start this. Virginia and Duncan Modesto Karibu Sana. Kindly wave if my internet is okay and if my sound is clear, give me a go ahead. Very clear. TikTok is perfect. Well done. Yes. Esther Kigombe, Duncan Modesto, and Sanya Joan. Clear. It's very clear. Good. Thank you so much. So let's do this. What is the thyroid? Now, in the body, we have different glands. And the function of glands is to secrete or to produce hormones that are used to regulate different functions in our system. Okay? 
So that is the function of glands. And these glands work under instructions. So I want you to know there are different levels of these glands. Number one, in your brain, there's a major or a master hormone, which you call the CEO. That CEO is what we call the hypothalamus. So if you have a pen and paper, just go with me, write slow, understand it. Don't be in a hurry today. We are just going to relax and learn. So we have the hypothalamus. Now that is our CEO. Below the hypothalamus, we have somebody who uh, sits as a general manager, uh, just below or then the base of the brain, and it's called the pituitary gland. Now this pituitary gland has the anterior and the posterior. When I say anterior, it's just the front, the posterior is just behind. So we have the anterior pituitary gland. Do not focus on cramming that. Just understand we have the master, the CEO, hypothalamus, then we have the general manager, who is the pituitary, and then now we have this gland, which is the thyroid. This basically looks like a butterfly and is lies ahead of the of the of the trachea. So in front of the trachea we have the tube, and then in front of the trachea we have the butterfly-like gland that is called the thyroid. So our master has to instruct the general managers, and then the general managers has, managers have to pass that information to the workers these employees, and then the employees do the work. So it's this simple. From the thyro from the hypothalamus, we are getting a call to the manager. This call is through a, a basically a stimulating hormone, okay? So it's called a TRH. So it's, it's going to release a hormone that is supposed to activate the pituitary gland. So the hypothalamus calls the pituitary, our CEO is calling our manager, and the call is through TRH. That is either a thyroid releasing hormone or thyrotrophin releasing hormone. Hold back. That is the call that is coming to the pituitary gland. And then from the pituitary gland, we have to stimulate this thyroid to produce thyroid hormones. Now, so the pituitary gland calls our employees or instructs our employees through another call and this call is what we call TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Are we together? So since we have activated the hypothalamus, it has given us TRH. TRH has uh, stimulated our manager who is the pituitary and the pituitary has now stimulated the thyroid. The thyroid now produces hormones that are called thyroid hormones. This is what we call T4 and T3. Now we'll get to the details of T4 and T3, but just understand this, that when you see four and three, this is basically three iodines attached to this hormone or four iodines attached to this hormone or this amino acid. So when you see T4 is four, when you see T3, that's three iodines. Okay, so understand it that way. Now, so we are, in, the, the thyroid gland starts to produce thyroid hormones and the most uh, available hormone or the most produced hormone is what we call uh, T4. And what is this T4? What T4 is basically is the, is the one that is actually called the thyroid hormone because it's the most abundant, but it is produced as an inactive one. So T4 is very inactive. The one that is supposed to be active is T3, which tells you you need to confirm uh, to convert this uh, T4 back to T3. So you have to reduce T4 to T3. Get one iodine from this person, give it to uh, reduce reduce him from those four to three, and this three is the one is that is active. Now, where does this happen? This happens in majorly two organs, in the brain and in the liver, but most importantly in the liver. So if you're already following, you already understand, you will not have the function of the thyroid hormones if your liver is fatty, if you have a dysfunctional liver. We will start to understand that. So as we go ahead, you already start to tap in the dyes that are, are, are messing you up. What is messing you up? Also, the, the, the liver, if the liver is fatty or the liver has problems, now you understand you will not convert T4 to T3. So T4 is the inactive one and T3 is the active one. Now, remember T4 is the inactive one, but it is the most abundant. That's why we call it the thyroid hormone. Okay? 
So the thyroid gland produces T3 and T4, but T3 at a lower level and T4 at a higher level, so that the liver now converts the T4 back to T3 and you get the functions of these hormones. Now, remember the call that we made from the general manager, which is the pituitary, to our employee, which is the thyroid gland, is through thyroid stimulating hormone, the TSH. Now that TSH has two functions, two major functions. Number one function is to instruct at the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones, the T4, also the T3. Number two function is to cause an enlarged gland, the thyroid to enlarge. So not only does TSH cause production of thyroid hormones, it also causes an enlarged thyroid gland. That tells you, if you have higher levels of TSH, you will start having an enlarged thyroid, what we call goiter. Pause and understand that. So we are telling the, the, the hypothalamus to give us a uh, thyrotrophin releasing hormone to activate the pituitary gland to give us thyroid stimulating hormone. And then this thyroid stimulating hormone stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. Those are the thyroid hormones. But again, this thyroid stimulating hormone is supposed to enlarge our thyroid gland and lead us into goiter. That is the issue. So at the end of the video, at the end of the talk, I'll tell you about goiter. So do not, do not panic. Do not even worry and get confused. Just relax, hold the talk for goiter. Okay? So now we've gotten that. Now, if you have excess of the thyroid hormone, the T4 being produced in excess in your blood, there is something that is called a negative feedback, which means this T4 will, it's negative, but it's a good feedback, which means T4 will now go back and stop our CEO. So excess amount of T4 in the system will go back and tell the CEO, hey, we've had enough of those calls. Job is done. So relax. Now, the CEO will not call the pituitary or the general manager, and the general manager will also not call the thyroid or the employee. So the amount of thyroid stimulating hormone in the system will totally depend on the amount of T4, the thyroid hormones in blood. So if we have high amounts of thyroid hormones in the blood, then we'll have low amounts of uh, TSH because now <clears throat> we have had so much of T4 in the blood and we are causing a negative feedback. So we are inhibiting uh, the, uh, the hypothalamus from giving us activation. We are also inhibiting the pituitary from giving us TSH. Okay? So I'm going to explain that for the sake of also medical students. So this is for everybody to understand it. So once you have excess uh, or more T4 being produced, you now block the hypothalamus and therefore it's like a cycle. So you don't produce any more thyroid hormones and that's how you regulate it. Because if you, if you just let it uh, continue producing thyroid hormones, you will end up in problems. Now, what is the function of this thyroid hormone, the T4 and T3? The major function of T4 is to be activated or converted to T3, which is the active one in the liver and in the brain, but most importantly, 80% in the liver. <clears throat> so once you convert T4 to T3, the active one, now this T3 circulates in blood and is the one that binds to different receptors in different organs. And I want you to know that the thyroid gland or thyroid hormones are involved in literally all the eight organ systems that have ever existed. There is no organ system that does not depend on the thyroid so if you have a problem with thyroid hormones, you'll have a serious problem with your entire system. Be it the gonads, you'll have infertility. Be it the skin, you'll have very bad skin. Be it the eyes, you'll have popping eyes. Be it the brain, you'll have low IQ. Be it uh, the liver, you'll have a fatty liver. You'll have obesity. So all this, every organ depends on thyroid hormones. So when you have now activated T4 to T3, what this does is, number one, we are going to activate, like for in, in embryology, for babies or the neonates, not neonates, the, the fetus that is growing in a, um, in a woman's womb, you're going to activate the development of the brain and the spinal cord. <clears throat> you're going to activate metabolism. Remember, T3 is a catabolic hormone. If you remember insulin, we said insulin 
is an anabolic hormone so it builds up things and again it helps you store so insulin helps you store things but t3 helps you break down things so t3 helps you break down fat to get free fatty acids and the ketone bodies that means t3 will be very high when you're fasting t3 helps you break down protein into amino acids so that you start synthesizing those uh, neurotransmitters hormones and even muscle buildup. Then T3 helps you to break glycogen in the liver to get glucose. So it breaks down things. So work is to break down things. That's the reason why if you have high uh, thyroid hormones in the system, you start losing weight. Because to break down fat helps you lose weight. Break down protein help you uh, start getting those amino acids and stuff. And that's why you'll have a high IQ. Are we following? If you're following, uh, uh, I'm glad already. So that is the function of T3. In the gonads, it will activate spermatogenesis and ovulation. So good amounts of T3 will help you get fertile and fertility. For the men, it will help you give, get high quality sperm. How about on the other way around? If you have low T3 hormones, you'll get the opposite. So you will be very sluggish because now it is this T3 is a metabolic hormone, helps you to improve energy, makes you energetic, makes you have the thrill to do work, makes you become this uh, vibrant, okay? But now when you have low thyroid hormones, the T3 specifically, what you'll get into is, you'll be very sluggish, you'll be very lazy, you'll, have no, you'll start adding weight, you'll have constipation because T3 activates the peristatic movement of the gut, okay? So it increases gut motility. So if you have low T3, then you start your gut relaxes and then you get constipation and indigestion. You will have low IQ. You will have poor quality sperm. Ovulation and the menstrual cycle will start being messed up. Do you now relate? Do you now relate? Now, remember I said that T3 is a catabolic hormone. Cuts down things. Cata, catabolic, cata. Cuts down things. But insulin is an um, anabolic hormone, which tells you that high insulin in your system does the opposite to the T3, which again tells you that if you have if you have insulin resistance, then definitely you'll have low or hypothyroidism. So insulin is a very dangerous hormone to T3. So higher insulin in your system because of taking those carbohydrates and taking that sugar will now inhibit your T3. So that will be a serious problem. And that's why we say sugar is a no. That's why we relate sugar to so many things because now once sugar inhibits T3, all other organs are already uh, in a mess. And also remember, sugar causes a fatty liver, sugar causes inflammation, and therefore we will also understand that as we go ahead, an inflamed gut causes a thyroid problem, and also a fatty liver. If you have a fatty liver or have an inflamed liver, you cannot convert T4 to T3. So you'll have high amounts of T4, but no T3. So it is inactive. Do we now understand where sugar brings in problems? Good. So take a minute, just sink that in, and then let's go to the next. Today we are going to go slow and surely until we reach the end. Because I have received so many requests to talk about the thyroid. And I know how complicated and how complex the thyroid is in relation to all other organ systems in the body. That's the reason why I'm going to take you slow and surely. So already you've already connected that there's a problem when you have high insulin. So when you consume most of these simple carbohydrates and those processed foods, you already understand there's a problem with T3. You already understand if you have a problem with the liver, again, you'll have a problem with hypothyroidism. And most importantly, for you to synthesize the T3 and the T4, T3 and T4, the thyroid hormones, for you to synthesize them, for you to make them, because the body makes them anyway, and then stores them in the thyroid. So it's the only, the only, uh, you only stimulate the thyroid to release them in blood. <clears throat> so for you to make thyroid hormones, the T3 and T4, you need two things. One, you need tyrosine. Tyrosine. Tyrosine is an amino acid. Where are we getting amino acids? from a protein-rich diet. And which proteins have high amino acid profile? 
animal proteins. Plant proteins do not have a complete amino acid profile. Because remember, tyrosine is an amino acid that is also coming from another amino acid that is called phenylalanine. So, listen to this. You eat that fatty meat, you absorb it, or you break it down, you absorb it as an amino acid, which is phenylalanine. And then this phenylalanine is then broken down to give you tyrosine, another amino acid. Now, this tyrosine will get you thyroid hormone. And how does that happen? This tyrosine will be combined with iodine to get that thyroid hormone. So if you combine this tyrosine with four iodine molecules or atoms, you get T4. If you combine it with three, you get T3. Do we now understand where we get the T3 and T4s? So you have your meat or your eggs, you get amino acid phenylalanine, you break down this phenylalanine, you get tyrosine. Now, tyrosine, from just the word T3 and T4, is that is that T is tyro, tyronine. So tyro, tyrosine is the, is the amino acid. So when you break down this phenylalanine, you get tyrosine, and then this tyrosine is combined with iodine that is coming from where? Those people who don't want to eat salt, iodized salt, those people who ignore seafoods, those people who don't want to consume seaweed. Hello? You need to combine your amino acid tyrosine with iodine to form T3 and T4. So that is how you form this. And this happens in the thyroid gland. So for you to get thyroid hormones, you need a, a, a functioning liver. You need low insulin. You need diets that are rich in animal protein. And then you need diets that are rich in iodine, which is the salt and the seafoods. So now we have our T3 and T4. This is one of the functions of the thyroid gland. So the thyroid gland produces uh, the hormones, thyroid hormones, the T3 and T4. It also produces another uh, T3 hormone that is inactive that is called RT3. And then another hormone that the thyroid produces is called calcitonin. From the word calcium, you can get calcitonin. So that's how you relate. It's easy to understand these things, calcium, calcitonin. So the hormone calcitonin, its action is actually to inactivate calcium that is coming in the blood system and also reduce the amount of calcium in the blood. And therefore that tells you, for you to prevent hardening of blood vessels and for you to prevent that heart attack because of high calcium in the blood, you need the thyroid gland. And that's why those people who have heart problems also have thyroid problems. To look at how the body is designed perfectly that yes you can consume a calcium rich diet and then calcium starts getting up in your blood and then this is highly regulated by calcitonin and calcitonin is coming from the thyroid gland how amazing is that the body is perfectly designed and somebody will ask what about if you have low calcium if you have low calcium in the blood there is another gland that is called parathyroid that will produce a hormone that will bring back the calcium to normal. So calcium is so regulated by the parathyroid gland and the thyroid gland. So excess of calcium in blood, the thyroid produces calcitonin, and calcitonin lowers this calcium. That's why I told you, if you have a pen, you can now start writing. Because it's not as easy as you thought. It's just go to an enlarged thyroid, that's it. No, it's not easy, it's that deep. Good. So, since that has sunk in, let's continue. We'll get to Hashimoto. Don't, don't worry. Hashimoto and Graves will be the last thing that we'll handle. So now, if somebody has hypothyroidism, basically, somebody has low thyroid hormones in blood, that only means that they have high TSH. This is, this is a little confusing. Relax. Listen to this. We said the hypothalamus gives uh, instructions to the pituitary and then the pituitary gives instructions to the thyroid and instruction from the pituitary to the thyroid we use TSH which means if you produce high amounts of TSH if TSH keeps going up you will keep producing more thyroid hormones okay 
But this same same thyroid hormones will inhibit production of that TSH. Now that tells you if you continue producing TSH, that says your thyroid hormone, thyroid gland is non-functional. So if you ever go to a lab and test for thyroid function test, and specifically the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, and you realize that amount of that TSH is going up, that will be an, an indicator that your thyroid is underperforming. That's why the level of TSH is rising, because the body is trying to give you TSH so that you produce more thyroid hormones to do what it has is supposed to do. But since you're not producing them, the thyroid is underperforming. And this is why it gets confusing, because most of you will go and take a TSH test and then start drugs immediately. But you've not taken uh, in, in, condition the, uh, in consideration the thyroid gland, because if the thyroid gland is underperforming, then TSH goes up. So the opposite happens here. Higher TSH means low or hypothyroidism. Higher TSH levels is an indicator of hypothyroidism. Lower TSH level is an indicator of hyperthyroidism. Is a CISO. When TSH is high, thyroid hormones are low. When thyroid hormones are high, TSH is low. That is very confusing even to the medical uh, students. So you need to sink it in slow. Once you draw that channel, you'll get to understand what I'm talking about. So, you've heard of primary hypothyroidism, secondary hypothyroidism, and tertiary hypothyroidism. What does that mean? It simply means you are producing low thyroid hormones as a result of, if it is primary hypo, this is the primary gland. Primary hypothyroidism, a messed up uh, thyroid gland. Maybe you have a tumor, maybe you have a surgery, you've had surgery. So surgery can take you into hypo. Thyroidism, the primary one. The secondary one goes up the pituitary gland. So maybe a pituitary tumor or cancer, that is a problem, or drugs that affect the pituitary gland. And then the tertiary is to our CEO, the hypothalamus. That is what it means. So if you have low thyroid hormones as a result of the thyroid gland, that is primary hypothyroidism. If you have low thyroid hormone as a result of pituitary gland mess up, that is secondary. And then the, the, the following one is the hypothalamus, so that is the tertiary. Have we understood up to then? So, hyperthyroidism, so many hormones in the system. Hypothyroidism, very low hormones in the system. What is the difference in terms of symptoms? Because this side we have hypo, and this side we have hyper. So if you have so many hormones in the system, what will happen? And if you have low hormones, what will happen? So when you have low hormones, I already told you, you will have so many side effects. Basically, you'll have so many symptoms. And for you to diagnose a thyroid problem, you need to look at these symptoms. So your doctor has to be very observant. That's why we said yesterday that appropriate diagnosis comes from keen observation and not not knowing. So not understanding or not knowing is not a guarantee that you'll make an appropriate diagnosis. You must be keen when observing and when clucking that patient. So physical examination is very possible. Look at it and see the neck is enlarged. But once you see that, you go deeper. So what are the symptoms of hypothyroidism? Number one is very much fatigue. So if you ever wake up every day, you're tired even after you've slept, you're still feeling very tired. You have low energy. There's no zeal to go even and do something, any activity. And this happens so much uh, in those people who are uh, in menopause. So you have low energy and fatigue all the time. You feel lazy. Okay. You have weight gain. So you're gaining weight without even understanding, even though most of you gain weight because of eating unhealthy diets. But if you've been gaining weight uh, tremendously, check your thyroid. If you have, if you, you always consider yourself as a depressed person. So depression is a symptom of low thyroid. We have uh, constipation because of low, uh, there's, there is reluctance in the movement of the bowel, so you get constipated. And then we have infertility and sexual disorders. So erectile dysfunction in men, uh, uh, lack of ovulation, and also irregular menstruation uh, cycles in women. We also have cold sensitivity. So you are in a room and everything feels cold. You're wearing, you actually think you, you're sick. You're wearing a, a hoodie, but you still feel cold. So that is cold sensitivity. You have hair loss, and women start losing their eyebrows and eyelashes. They start falling off. You have very brittle hair. Okay? 
and it just falls off. So alopecia is part of that. And then now, an enlarged thyroid. Now, somebody would ask me, why do we have an enlarged thyroid in hypothyroidism? Goita is both hypo and hyper. Do not be confused that goita is, goita is hyper. Goita is both hypo and hyper. And the reason is, if you're producing so much TSH, it will enlarge your thyroid. Again, if your system is deficient with iodine, as a compensatory mechanism, the body will enlarge the thyroid so that it can tap any iodine from anything that comes in. Any diet that has iodine, the smallest amount of iodine, the thyroid is expanding to actually trap it. Okay? So hypo and hyper can always cause goiter. For those of you who thought goiter is only for hyper, now you understand. So goiter is part of hypothyroidism. We have irritability. Somebody just gets angry all the time and you think it's estrogen. Maybe those who are in menopause are thinking it's because of hot flashes and stuff. That is not true. Okay. And then we have the dry skin, very bad skin. When you have low thyroid, and then again, above all, IQ, you forget all the time, you cannot think critically, IQ. So a low IQ is a symptom of uh, hypothyroidism. And finally, a very reduced heart rate. So your heart rate is very low, and uh, you have what you call bradycardia. So those are the symptoms of low thyroid hormones. That is hypothyroidism. Are we together? So now I want to ask you a question. Why is it that uh, this condition is more prone in women than in men? I'm putting that prone in quotes. Why do you think women are most, uh, they're the ones who experience so much of this greater than men? That is a question to you. What of sweating? Uh, that is data. Da. Sweating is hyperthyroidism. So I'm going to the symptoms of hyper. I'm just talking about symptoms of hypo. So that's the question to you people. Why do you think that women are the ones who have a high chances of getting uh, this condition? As I take that breather, let me just wait for your answers. You are allowed to guess. This is a forum for adults and no answer that comes from an adult is wrong. Okay, we can always work with your answer. <laughs> yeah, so adults are never wrong. Don't be shy to answer a question if you're an adult. So why do you think women are the ones who have high prevalence of getting goiter and not men? These are interesting answers. Man to say is contraceptives, yes, hormonal contraceptives. Black beauty, how do you know your hormones are unbalanced? We'll get to the diagnosis. Maybe hormonal imbalance that is a uh, DALI. Could be because of estrogen that is in table. Family planning, hormonal imbalance, estrogen. I like these answers. I like these answers. Good. So number one, pregnancies. Yes, this is a good answer. They are more active and stressed. Why do, what do you mean by they are more active and stress? Because menopause is a risk factor that is from making that's a good one. So let me let me enlighten you. Thank you for those answers. Uh, I think my, my, my people are very alert now. Awesome. So number one, in hospital, men walk to hospital as the last option. They are now defeated, and men will always go to the hospital as the last resolution to their health care. <laughs> so men, before they, they, they realize they are sick or unwell, before they go to hospital and they do an examination, it is, they are at the brink of dying. They are now seeing death. That's when they, they walk to the hospital. But women are so quick to complain about these symptoms. When a woman has infertility, when she starts putting on weight uh, and she's told by friends, hey, you've grown fat, She'll be quick to rush the when she has this low energy, she's 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 constipated, and she has these fevers and all this cold and stuff. So, and again, she notices her neck is starting to enlarge. She'll be quick to run to the hospital and complain. 
So once she complains about these symptoms, it is easier for a doctor to do an examination and then they diagnose her with goiter or uh, uh, thyroid condition. For men, they come last. Again, number two, women on hormonal contraceptives. Hormonal contraceptives are high in estrogen. And yes, that person who said estrogen, those people who said estrogen, perfect answers. So estrogen and insulin, they go hand in hand. That's why estrogen adds you weight. It's also an anabolic hormone. So high estrogen exposes you to high insulin. And then what happens next? Low thyroid. And then what happens? An enlarged uh, thyroid gland. That's how women get to this. Okay? So it is that simple. Women are very quick to complain. And they have high estrogen in their system. So before a man gets to hospital for a diagnosis, hey, I'm a sukumo kusukumo. So now you've understood, you've understood the function of that thyroid gland. You've understood the T4, how it's formed. But before we even continue, let me take you through something here. Good. If you have high T3, the, the hormones are high, so you're hyper. So your oxygen consumption will go up. Here's the reason why your heart rate increases when you have high thyroid hormones, hyperthyroidism. Your oxygen consumption goes up your heart rate goes up. So this is actually the opposite of hypo. So instead of going into bradycardia, which is a low heart rate, you go into tachycardia, which is high heart rate. Instead of going into low consumption and low energy, you go into hyper. Instead of having uh, uh, ovulation issues and uh, menstrual related issues, you start having a fixed menstrual cycle. Instead of having that poor quality sperms, you will have high quality sperm. Instead of having that low IQ, you'll have high EQ. High IQ, sorry. Instead of having that low energy, you'll have high energy. So let me let me just give you a comparison between hyper and hypothyroidism, symptom-wise. When you have hypothyroidism, these are the symptoms. Bradycardia, which is a low heart rate. Uh, cold intolerance, so you feel cold all the time. Constipation, because there's no bowel movements. Coarse and brittle hair, and even eyebrows falling off. Depression low energy and lethargy, dry and yellow skin, weight gain, and low IQ. That is when you have low. How about when you have high? Tachycardia, which is an increased heart rate. Diarrhea, because of an increased bowel movement. Again, we have silky hair. So for this one, for ladies, these are a perfect one. Silky hair for you. That tells you, if you simply balance the thyroid hormones, you'll have very silky hair, very nice eyebrows. You don't need to draw them. <laughs> then you have increased uh, a very good skin because now you've increased circulation to the skin. There'll be a high heart rate. There'll be, But on the higher side, there'll be anxiety. So on the other side, you have depression. On this other side, higher side, you have anxiety. Then you start losing weight. This one can be a good one, but you can lose weight uh, drastically and to the lower side, so you'll get into a low BMI, underweight. Sweating all the time. This is a symptom that one of you mentioned on TikTok. So you can imagine you, you're there, you want to greet somebody and your hands are sweaty. And this is the reason why most people ask me, why, why, how, how do I uh, manage uh, sweaty hands? Why don't you first start by checking your, your insulin levels and then your thyroid levels? Then you have tremors all the time. You might think somebody uh, is a cigarette smoker or uh, an attacker, a glass of alcohol. And then again, goiter is here. Yes, sweaty hands and feet are the same. Extremities, once you sweat to extremities, that is a symptom of hyperthyroidism. So how do you diagnose goiter or hyper, hyper or hypothyroidism? First things first, a physical examination as a medic, you need to do a physical examination and be very keen. Take patient history. Is, are they diabetic? Are they stressed? What foods are they eating? Do they have a leaky gut? Are the foods that they are consuming highly inflammatory? Do they have a fixed liver? So liver function test has be there. Do they have fixed kidneys and adrenals? So adrenal tests have to be there. But the physical examination is the first one. Once you physically observe and you see their throat is, uh, their, their neck is swelling, and then they're experiencing these symptoms, but they'll talk to you. That's why you need adequate uh, uh, abilities to communicate so that you ask these questions and they reveal to you. Because when a patient is desperate, they will reveal all this to you. 
ask them about their menstrual cycle, ask them about their stress levels, how about their diets, how about uh, uh, their environment, family history, medication history, any diagnosis they've done in the last six months. Once you do that, you have a rough idea of what is happening because the physical examination will already tell you what is happening. Do the heart checks, the vital tests that we miss out all the time. You'll get the mamas, you'll get the heart rates, and you'll start to understand there must be a problem with the thyroid. Now, send them for a thyroid function test. Now, if you send this patient for a thyroid function test, make sure you're doing the TSH and also doing the T3 and T4 tests, specifically T4. Why? Because sometimes you can have a high, t, t, uh, a high or low TSH, but the thyroid is the problem. So you need to observe the functions of the uh, of the pituitary so get to know the levels of TSH. And if you realize, if those of you who have done a TSH test, TSH test has a very wide range from 0 0.5 to about 5. That's a tenfold range. That's a very huge range. But the normal range has to be narrowed down, possibly a 1.8 to 3.0. That's a perfect one. But the, the indicators will always show you 0 0.5 to 5. You can imagine that range is so big. You cannot even narrow down to a simple diagnosis. So if you do a thyroid function test and you get your TSH is between uh, 1.8 to 3.0, perfect. You're doing good already. So we can start ruling out that. And what other symptoms can you look for? These patients who keep on clearing their throat, every morning they wake up, they're like, <coughs> <coughs> that is one symptom of thyroid problem. That's also one symptom of the gut, the reflux disease. Or gastritis. So once you hear that, you start questioning. Is being moody hypothyroidism? Yes, moody and low energy, low fatigue, uh, high fatigue and uh, malaise is basically hypothyroidism. Good question. So those people keep uh, clearing the throat because once uh, most of the symptoms for this thyroid, the enlarged thyroid already, is a persistent cough and dry cough for that matter, difficulty in swallowing. Difficulty in breathing and a change in voice. Sometimes somebody talks to you and then their voice just disappears. But of course, most doctors cannot tap that because immediately you walk in, I'm busy writing a prescription. I'm already writing. I don't even know your face. I'm writing a prescription. I've not even done a physical examination. I'm writing a lab test. So if you observe the patient, if you talk to them and engage them, let them relax, they will do these things. You will observe them. Ask them, how about your swallowing? Are you enjoying your food? They'll tell you. They'll actually tell you, yesterday I tried to swallow food and it was very difficult. And I have this persistent cough dactari all the time. I have difficulty in breathing. Sometimes when I'm sleeping, I choke. So you look at that as sleep apnea and also thyroid problems. And once you do a physical examination, you're already seeing that. When you do a auscultation, you're already seeing the heart rate's going up or low. Then you realize where they are. And you'll see them struggling to breathe. Okay? So once you do that, you have a good uh, base to diagnose these patients or this client of yours. Don't call them customers. This client of yours. Now, what are the causes of a messed up thyroid? So let's say you, you have had a normal thyroid for, for, for the longest time ever. And then now you've been told, hey, your thyroid is having problems. So what are the causes of this? Uh, what, what are the killers of the thyroid? This is a question I'm actually throwing to you because already if you've been here from the time I started, you already understand the types of diets that you need. So let me give you a hint also. Thyroid hormone are fat-soluble hormones. <laughs> they are fat soluble, just like uh, the testosterone, the estrogen, the, 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 the adrenal hormones. They are fat soluble. So if I say that, what do you think are the things that cause a problem in your thyroid? <laughs> Doty is very keen. Sugar is <laughs> number one. Seed oils is there. Wheat products are there. Alcohol is there. Smoking cigarettes is there. You can never lack them here. You can never. Those inflammatory foods are always present. 
Now let me show you. Causes of goita, we already said hyper and hypo. But I want you to know that what kills. Yeah, somebody just mentioned statins. Bernard, thank you so much for that answer. Statins, they lower cholesterol, they lower the fat in the system. And what happens? Thyroid hormones are fat soluble. What if you're not eating fatty meats? Thyroid hormones are supposed to come, uh, are supposed to be soluble in these fatty meats. What if you're not eating protein? Thyroid hormones come from amino acids that come from protein. What if you're not taking salt? You need iodine for you to get thyroid hormones. So if you're on atrocitin, drop it immediately. If you're on hormonal contraceptives, what are you doing? What are you doing? How many times have we tell you this is not the best way? Birth control is in the hands of the man. I know most men don't understand that, but who, please drop that. Any hormonal contraceptives are no for women. So let's continue. There are also drugs that can cause a problem in the thyroid or drugs that can cause you goiter. Now, when I say goiter, understand I'm talking about both hyper and hypo. So drugs like lithium, have you ever heard of lithium? Lithium is a metal. You can imagine it's used as a drug in people who have psychosis. Those people who have mental problems. People who have severe depression, you can be given lithium. Lithium kills your thyroids. Boy. Thank God is a drug that is totally regulated, but lithium kills their thyroids. So imagine somebody who is uh, psychotic, maybe has bipolar. So one day he's experiencing this low energy and the next minute he's hyper. So now you give them lithium and then lithium kills their thyroid. So what, that, what does that tell you? You will only take them from the bipolar into straight into depression. So you'll take them into one extreme of, of the bipolar, which is depression. That is so, so misguided. Now, another thing that kills the thyroid, when you have that enlarging thyroid, you go for radiation. And you've heard of giving these people radioactive iodine. Have you heard of that? That most of these people who have this condition are given radioactive iodine. Are we not digging your early grave? Are we not telling you, go ahead and kill that thyroid, and then you'll come back, we we'll give you drugs for hypothyroidism? Are we not telling you, go ahead and kill that thyroid so that you come back for the surgery? And guess who benefits? Hello? Who benefits from the surgery, from the drugs? <laughs> cycle is always the same. The cycle is always the same. <laughs> Be very keen with the, <laughs> the big farmer does not know you. It will now get to know you by names. Even your doctor is just an agent of the big farm. It's that simple. Everything goes back to them. They will give you those bad foods. You eat them. They will give you those drugs and radiation. Get messed up. And then now once you get messed up, look at diabetes. Somebody gives you the, the, the citagliptin, drugs that will kill the pancreas. And he's so sure that a year or two years down the line, you will come back for insulin. It is the same thing that is happening here. The reason why you are depressed, in quotes, because I don't believe there's uh, a disease called depression. I think there's depression, but not clinical depression. So you are depressed, and they, they diagnose you of clinical depression or bipolar. Then you go to hospital, they give you lithium. The lithium kills your thyroid. So the next thing you will bring, you'll do is to bring back yourself so that you can get rid of that thyroid. And then now when you get rid of that thyroid, you go into hypothyroidism. Now you have even lower energy and depression. And then guess what? Antidepressants. Antidepressants, antidepressants. There's always a new antidepressant in town. It is, it is even the hardest thing for, for, for psychiatrists to diagnose a medical condition. They have gone to class to study all these psychiatric conditions, but they will take a whole time to diagnose one condition. 
So chances are always high that it will be, it will be the wrong diagnosis. So when I tell you to drop those inflammatory foods, when I tell you to start fasting, I am actually telling you to fix your liver so that the liver fixes your thyroid. I'm also telling you to lower your insulin through fasting. Once you lower your insulin, you raise your T3. When I tell you not to overfeed your children, I'm telling you to give your children a chance to come back to you when they are hungry. Don't give them multivitamin syrups and those appetite stimulants. I'm telling you to give those children time so that their insulin levels go down and their T3 almost goes up and then they get a high IQ. Do you ever ask yourself, why is it that people from the lake side, the Luos in Kenya, they are, so, they are considered very sharp. Do you ever ask yourself that? Can you now relate? Because of high T3, and how, where are we getting high T3? We are getting it from seafoods. We are getting iodine from seafood, so they don't, they don't go into iron defi uh, iodine deficiency. They have high omega-3 because of the fish and the fish oils. That's the easiest thing. So consume those seafoods in plenty because you need selenium, you need iodine, you need uh, amino acids from protein, you need the saturated fats, all these are the ones that will boost your child's IQ. And all these foods are the ones that will reduce inflammation in your system. Once you understand that, we are good to go. You don't need so much food. You need nutrient-dense foods. The eggs, the liver, the kidneys, the green leafy vegetables. I'll talk about also the foods that are called uh, goiterogens, the foods that they consider uh, as foods that mess up uh, the thyroid. So let us continue. So if you're a cigarette smoker, if you drink alcohol, if you eat highly inflammatory foods, the sugar, the wheat products, the processed foods, the, the seed oils, if you don't fast salt, if you have a messed up gut, if you have a messed up liver, if you're on drugs, cold statins, and if you're on antacids, these are the things that are causing you a messed up thyroid. You don't even if you don't even need to ask why is my, my, my gland enlarging. You already know. So things that kill the thyroid. I already just mentioned those foods. But listen to this. There's another surprise. Do you know of things that are called halogens? I know, I know, I know now it's time for people to run away. Halogens. Let's let's go back to the chemistry class. What are halogens? What are halogens? <laughs> yeah. What are halogens? And what, what are the examples of halogens? Halogens. Let's see those who did not sit near the window in a chemistry class. <laughs> Most of us sat near the window in a chemistry class. What are halogens? <laughs> And what are the examples of halogens? <laughs> eh. <laughs> eh? A double lesson for chemistry. It was a free lesson for most of you. <laughs> eh. Can see nitrogen somewhere. <laughs> I, I don't understand why all of us did not like chemistry. <laughs> eh? If you score a strong 15, ah, it was so awesome. You felt like a prophet. You laughed at somebody who scored a two, yet all of you are in the E zone. But it was so interesting that, hey, what are halogens? <laughs> hey, so, so, so let me answer this. Halogens are elements in the group seven. Yeah. <laughs> the bromines, the fluorine, actually fluorine, fluorine bromine, Chlorine and iodine. Those are the most <laughs> at your zone. Those are the most known. <laughs> eh? Bromine, fluorine, chlorine, <laughs> and iodine. Now, an interesting part is iodine is actually supposed to help you get this T3 and T4, the, the, the thyroid hormones. But unfortunately, excess of iodine will cause you a thyroid problem. <laughs> yeah? So excess of that iodine will cause a serious problem. 
because these halogens are stored in the thyroid gland. And when they are stored there, remember, they are, they, are, they are toxic to the body. So when they are stored in the thyroid gland, the body, through the immune system, do you know autoimmune? Autoimmune means the body automatically now starts producing antibodies to help you clean the system. So when the, the antibodies of the immune system gets uh, to gets to, what, to the thyroid and realizes hey, this one is carrying a lot of burden, a lot of toxin, then the immune system does not recognize the thyroid anymore. It starts hitting the thyroid. So it's now targets the thyroid. And for example, the disease that we just say, the, the, the Hashimoto and the Graves, we realize that one of those diseases, the thyroid itself produces antibodies that actually kill it. So when you got these halogens in the thyroid gland, and then the immune system starts to realize, oh, okay, this one is not our own. So it starts to target it. Once it starts to target it, it kills the thyroid. Then you get into low T3 and T4, a problem. So autoimmune conditions are induced by yourself, by the diet that you eat. Number two, if you have a leaky gut and those allergies come in, this will actually augment autoimmune. Therefore, apart from you just having high iodine, the bromine, the chlorine, and the fluoride in your thyroid, you again now have a leaky gut because of eating seed oils, sugar in all forms, uh, processed foods, and wheat products. Now you mess up your gut, you get those allergies. Once you get those allergies, autoimmune comes in. So you, you, autoimmune just basically means your immunity is trying to help you. But now at some point it overreacts because now it doesn't understand what is happening here. So it overreacts and then targets your own system. That becomes a serious problem. Okay? So all this, and remember this, bromine is actually used in, in dough. When they're trying to make bread, so my people eat bread. When they're trying to make bread, they add in bromine. Bromine is also used in water and chlorine too. So if you drink water that has been uh, uh, cleaned, in quotes, with bromine and chlorine, you are in trouble. Fluorine, where do you get fluoride? In your favorite commercial toothpaste, whether herbal or non-herbal. That's why I warn you against uh, commercial toothpastes. If you're still using commercial toothpaste and you're in this life, you are a recipe of a serious disaster. Commercial toothpaste have fluoride. Fluoride will cause you dental fluorosis. So instead of it uh, clearing cavities, it will cause you cavities. Also, it will kill your liver because remember, it's absorbed in the mouth. And again, it will kill your thyroid. Also, fluoride causes calcification of the pineal gland and therefore you start having problems with sleeping. So please, let that commercial toothpaste just go. Use salt, use activated charcoal, use bicarbonate soda. You can also use miso, just a stick or a, a flossing agent. So avoid these halogens by all means. And then start fixing your gut. The leaky gut is a very serious problem in autoimmune. So you will have all these problems. So sometimes, let me actually enlighten you. An enlarged thyroid, <coughs> the one that you call goiter, is not necessarily a problem. So sometimes you just think, I have an enlarged thyroid, I'm having problems. Yes, that could be a problem, but sometimes it's not a problem because I already told you, when your body is trying to adapt as an adaptation mechanism to tap iodine from the diet, there's a small amount of iodine. So those people who don't eat seafood, they don't eat salt, uh, they don't eat fish, uh, the mena, the seaweeds and stuff. They have low iodine. Their soil is the salt. Uh, their uh, the, um, what else? Uh, their soil is poor in iodine. So these people suffer a lot because now their thyroid will, will be tempted to enlarge so that they can trap iodine from the diet. Now you see that enlargement is not a problem, but you might end up getting a surgery for no good reason. That enlarged thyroid is just basically an adaptation mechanism of the body. So it can it can actually go back to normal by just taking iodine supplements, the seafoods, and salt. Iodine is salt. So sometimes we rush to the hospital and because we do not have the information, that's why we come in to give you the information. You can rush to the hospital just because you have an enlarged thyroid. And then now your doctor recommends for surgery because that is the best option. And then now you become desperate. 
because they now tell you they now sell you the fear you will have you'll be infertile you'll have all these issues because the thyroid is everywhere you'll have liver problems you'll have high uh, you start adding weight so we need to remove this gland never ever remove an organ don't let it be the last option that you're dying or you're at stage four of cancer so we have to get it off but removing that organ is not fixing the problem if you reverse a biological function, if you remove a biological organ, you are getting into worse conditions. Because now once you remove the thyroid, that will only lead you to one way. You will now start taking drugs that are the eutyrox, uh, those drugs that are basically synthetic thyroid hormone uh, tablets. I removed my gut blood. Removing that organ does not fix anything. Let me help you, uh, Sony, but unfortunately it's too late. For you to heal from a gallbladder problem, you only need to fast and eat healthy keto. So the liver will produce the bile salts that will clear everything in the gallbladder and then you recover. If it is infected, then use antibiotics and then combine it with healthy keto and fasting. Your gallbladder goes back to normal. Well, Kamajia Kujaza is Wanakmia chlorine na fluorine you will have a problem with the thyroid. That means you'll have to top up. Because remember, those halogens, they compete with iodine for binding sites. Now remember the binding site for iodine for this matter is the thyroid, uh, the thyroid, the, the tyronine, the amino acid, or tyrosine, sorry. So if chloride binds tyrosine, then you don't have thyroid hormone. Also remember cigarette smoking has cyanide, the, the thiocyanides that bind iodine and therefore make it uh, deficient in the system. Also cassavas, they have high content of thiocyanate. Uh, uh, we don't want that. Okay. So any food, any compound that is actually targeting the binding sites of iodine, it has to go. Any food that is causing you a leaky gut, any food that is causing you inflammation, go. But this is the reason why most women who are in post who are post menopause they experience these things because when you're in menopause it, it's supposed to, your estrogen is supposed to go down but your progesterone goes down more and then estrogen remains high so that is a problem because estrogen insulin goes up and then the thyroid starts to expand again so there are foods that are called goitrogens goitrogens are just foods that will are considered to mess up your thyroid now this is not true even the cassavas, they don't mess up your thyroid. They don't. What cassavas, they say cassavas, cruciferous vegetables, like the broccoli, cauliflower, and stuff, sometimes nuts, sometimes sweet potatoes. They say these are uh, uh, goitrogens, foods that will cause you a messed up thyroid. That is not true. What these foods do is they have thiocyanides, and these are the ones that compete with iodine, iodine for binding sites. So if you were already iodine deficient, these foods will make it worse for you. That's why I tell you cassava should be eaten once in a month or so. If you're already obese, if you're obese, why would you eat a cassava? Because if you're obese, chances are high, your thyroid is messed up, so you already have an iron deficiency. You already have low thyroid hormones. So you need to up your game. You need to increase salt, but reduce any food that brings you problems. But for the rest, like the cruciferous vegetables and the sweet potatoes, their levels of cyanides are very low, but for cassava, it's the highest. So those foods do not destroy your thyroid. What they do is they compete with iodine for binding sites, and therefore they can make it easy for you to go into more iron, uh, iodine deficiency. Speak about menopause in women. I already said that women in menopause, their estrogen levels and progesterone are supposed to go down because their ovaries are already failing, are already zimezeka, they're tired. So they rely on the adrenal glands to produce progesterone and estrogen. Now, unfortunately, you eat so many bad foods, processed foods, soy products, seed oils, wheat products, pasteurized milk, and these are the foods, and sugar. These are the foods that kill your adrenals also. So you're in menopause and you're still eating these foods. Therefore, your production of progesterone and estrogen is compromised already. So now the small estrogen and the small progesterone that you have are not even at balance because remember, progesterone is the one that goes down drastically. So your estrogen levels remain as though they are high. Even though on the scale they are low, but remember this progesterone balances the side effects of estrogen. So when this goes down, then you go into estrogen dominance. 
That's why you're so emotional. That's why you get those hot flashes, that acne. Okay? And then now, the thyroid problem because of the estrogen. So the higher the estrogen, the lower the T3. Eat all types of vegetables at this. Eat all types of vegetables. Enjoy them. Just make them organic. Don't eat GMO foods because also GMO foods have content of uh, chemicals that mess up your thyroid. So don't be lied to that these foods will, will, will destroy your thyroid. They don't destroy your thyroid. They only cause you uh, an exacerbated iodine deficiency. That will be worse if you already have iodine deficiency. Okay? Also, stress levels. If your job is stressful, if your marriage is stressful, if your environment is stressing you up, stress raises your amount of cortisol. Cortisol tells the liver to break down glycogen to give you glucose. Once this glucose comes into the blood, guess what happens? Insulin goes up. <laughs> and then what happens? Thyroid goes down. Stress can be psychological. Stress can be physical. Those people who have had accidents and stuff. And also those people who are on chronic use of steroid drugs, the gym goers, those people who want muscle building. Those people who are using dexamethasone, prednisolone, the asthma drugs for the longest period of time. You are in trouble here. Those, people, those women who use dexamethasone to enlarge their hips. Those ladies who use beclomethasone in creams to lighten their skin. This is a problem already. Because those steroidal drugs will cause you an increase in uh, the steroid hormone, which is basically cortisol. That will cause an increase in uh, glucose because the liver will start breaking down glycogen to give you glucose. That will increase insulin. That will lower your thy thyroid hormones. A serious problem. So stress is a very, and also uh, cortisol or stress also can cause a suppression in the, in our CEO. Do you remember our CEO? Our CEO? What was our CEO? Because we had our CEO, and then general managers, and then the workers. Who was our CEO? I've already seen somebody who was here from the beginning. <laughs> That's a good one. Ah, good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. Ah, people are awake. Somebody said the pituitary. No, you, sir. The pituitary is our general manager. Our CEO was the hypothalamus. Our general manager was the pituitary. And then our worker was the thyroid. Okay? Yeah. So hypothalamus is correct. That is the answer. So, come back on that one and take notes. You don't want to sit near the window. <laughs> Again, cortisol interferes with conversion of T4 to T3. Because remember, we said T4 is the most abundant, but the inactive one. T3 is the least abundant, but the active one. So, cortisol or stress has three ways to interfere with the thyroid. One, it causes a suppression of the hypothalamus, which is the CEO. Number two, it causes an increase in cortisol, and cortisol will increase a liver production of glucose. That will increase your insulin. And number three, cortisol will now block your conversion of T4 to T3. Therefore, you'll have high T4 in the system, but very low T3. Is fermented vegetables healthy? Yes, if you look at that end, we have already fermented vegetables. That's fermented cabbage. So anything fermented is good for you. Don't add sugar. So now, finally, before I even go to the final, let me talk about Hashimoto's and the Graves disease because somebody has asked for it so much time. So this is the simplest way. Hashimoto's disease, the thyroid makes antibodies that attack itself. How easy is that to understand it? So your thyroid sometimes gets an overreaction. Then the thyroid starts producing antibodies. Antibodies are basically your immune cells. And then those antibodies, instead of fighting other things, they start fighting the same cell organ that produces them. So it becomes an autoimmune. So that is Hashimoto's. And in Hashimoto's, there is low iodine. So in this one, you can give iodine as a supplement in diets. You will get maximum improvement. And then you fix the gut, of course, because of autoimmune. Fix the gut, fix the liver, autoimmune disappears. Increase salt, increase seafood. Hashimoto disappears. On the other side, we have the Graves disease. Graves disease, we have so many, there's so much production of T4 
T4. So your thyroid is producing a lot of T4. So graft disease can also be a tumor. You can get a tumor that causes the, uh, the thyroid gland to produce so much of the hormones. And now Graves' disease, on the contrary to Hashimoto's, you have high iodine. So you actually need things to bind this iodine to get it off the system. So in Graves' disease, you cannot give iodine. But this is a problem. Once you just get goiter, once you get these conditions, guess what they do? You're either given thyroid hormones, the synthetic ones, or you're given surgery, or you're given iodine. And radioactive iodine for that matter. And we say radiation will kill the thyroid. So you need to be careful. You actually need, before you even start therapy, you need to understand which side of the of the coin are you. Because both sides have goiter. Both hyper and hypo have goiter. So for you to recover, you need to understand which side are you. Are you on the hypo or are you on the hyper? Once you understand that, it becomes easy for you. However, the management of the two is the same. You must fix your gut. You must fix your liver. You must uh, stop the inflammatory foods. And then you must start eating healthy keto and saturated fats. So this is how you reverse this. Or this is how you restore your thyroid function. And this is how you recover from goiter. Number one on the list. Kill all halogens. Kill all halogens. That water that is uh, cleaned with iodine, uh, with bromine and chlorine, let it go. That GMO food, let it go. Those fertilizers, let them go. That processed food and the breads that have bromine, especially most processed foods have bromine, let them go. They also have sugar, let them go. That commercial toothpaste that has fluoride, let it go. Okay? So that's how you start, processed foods, water, toothpaste, and GMO foods. You're already good with autoimmune. You're already starting to reverse autoimmune. That is one. So for my people who have goiter already, this this, this, this is just how you reverse it. Stop telling us that this is my favorite toothpaste brand. I don't know this toothpaste uh, is herbal. Stop it. Throw that toothpaste in the, in the bin and start using salt, start using uh, activated charcoal or bicarbonate soda. That is one. Number two, stop eating processed foods. They have bromine. Not even energy drinks. Not even carbonate soda. Leave them. They have sugar, and sugar is highly inflammatory to your thyroid and your gut. And you said for you to recover from the thyroid, you must fix the gut. That's why I always tell you, for every condition that you go through, you will never heal if you don't fix the gut. Start by fixing the gut. And somebody will tell me, if we don't use bromine to clean water, what will we use? Will we not get cholera and typhoid? Listen, if you fix your gut, that HCL in your stomach is there for a reason. It's actually there to help you kill those bacteria that are coming with food and water. Okay? Number two, heal your gut. And how do you heal your gut? Fasting. Healthy keto. Dropping all inflammatory foods, the seed oils. Start cooking using ghee, tallow, coconut oil or butter, drop wheat products, the chapati, the bread, the spaghetti, the anjera, the mandazi, drop them, drop processed cereals, drop most of your, of your, of your grains, because these grains have anti-nutrients that will block absorption of iodine. And also that will block absorption of amino acids. So start eating healthy keto. Basically, uh, saturated fats, cook your meals in saturated fats, the coconut oil, the ghee, the tallow, and the butter. Or even avocado oil. Drop that seed oil. Drop that sugar in all forms, including fruits and honey. Once you drop that sugar, and then you start healing the gut. So drop sugar, drop wheat products, and drop seed oils. And any processed foods. We don't need processed foods. Drop them. And then lower your stress levels. So once you fix your gut, once you start eating healthy keto, you're already 50 to 60% into healing. Once you start fasting, your gut heals. Your insulin goes down. Your estrogen goes down. Your thyroid hormone starts coming up. And normalize. Because fasting is the secret medicine. 
Because remember, our target in this is to lower insulin, to lower estrogen, to fix our gut, and then fix our thyroid. And since we know that thyroid can be fixed by one, eating uh, seafoods that have high uh, content of iodine to prevent iodine deficiency, they have high omega-3, they have fats, saturated fats, like the fatty fish. So eat fish, eat omena, eat oysters, eat all seafoods plus the seaweed. These are foods that are rich in iodine and omega-3. We want that. Lower your stress. If your spouse is stressing you, talk it out. If you can't talk it out, <laughs> I'm not a marital officer, so I'll not advise you on that. But you need to lower your stress because I just gave you three ways in which stress can kill your thyroid. Then in Eat salt, whether raw or cooked. Simos is good, eat it. So whether raw or cooked salt is salt, make it iodized. Eat seafood, eat seaweed, simos, sea salt. Enjoy sea salt. But normal salt has also iodine, so you can enjoy it. Okay, so zero sugar, zero inflammatory foods, zero treated water, zero commercial toothpastes, zero antacids, Zero antibiotics unless necessary. And once you use those antibiotics, once you're done with the dose, consume fermented cabbage. Fermented cabbage will actually help you recover the gut normal flora. You can also use Mursik. Don't add sugar. Eat every vegetable. Eat all types of protein, red or white. Make them fatty. Then start fasting. Okay? Those drugs will not help the situation. Those drugs that are synthetic thyroid hormones, uh, they, they will not help the situation unless you have fixed the cause. Drugs are not fixing the cause, they are fixing the symptoms. Drugs for hypo and hyper will not fix the cause. The cause is in your gut, the cause is not your eating, the cause is in your insulin, and the cause is in your estrogen. Lower that. Good. And cucumber, is it cucumber or cucumber? Whatever. You can eat every type of vegetable. All vegetables, just make them organic. Eat all vegetables, eat all uh, spices, make them organic. Eat all meats and protein, whether red or white. Enjoy them in plenty, make them fatty. Eat all saturated fats, the animal fats and the coconut oil, enjoy them. That is how you fix this. So ladies and gentlemen, if at all I've spoke for one hour, 17 minutes, and you have not understood anything, I am a very bad teacher. <laughs> I consider myself a very bad teacher because I have done my best to make sure that this topic sinks in because the number of requests that I've had from people who are going through this, I've seen people on propyl thyroxyl PTU, people on cabimazole, people on methimazole, people who are using euthyrox. I've seen these people refilling their prescriptions every time. And some, sometimes they take drugs for six months. So they buy drugs for six months so that they don't come back all the time. It is, it is a mess because health is very expensive, drugs are very expensive, they come with side effects, they are not going to fix the cause, they are going to fix the symptoms. So what you need to concentrate on is fixing the cause. And if you did not understand well, I just you need to watch this video again. I just started by breaking down the thyroid function, how actually the anatomy and the physiology of the thyroid, then I brought in hyper and hypothyroidism, then I brought in the functions of the thyroid hormones, then I brought in goita in details, then I took you back to how to fix the thyroid, and then finally, how to fix goiter. Naturally, without having to take a drug, without doing the surgery. So I have done my best on this one. So I hope those people who have goiter can simply get, so share this video with those people. Share this live. If they missed it, just share the video with them. That will be perfect because we need to save these people. You can imagine how the, the thyroid or thyroid hormones are, are connected to everything. Imagine a child is having autism. Imagine a child is having is becoming last in class all the time because of low IQ. They are drooling. The child is ever sick in the hospital because of low immunity. You have very bad skin. Women with bad hair. Men with very bad hairlines. Your eyebrows are falling off. You have infertility issues. Your menstrual cycle is always messed up. You're either gaining weight or losing weight so drastically. You don't understand what is happening. 
you're either feeling so hot or you're feeling not hot in the way that you, you're thinking. You're either feeling very high temperatures or you're feeling very cold. You have burning feet and burning sensations all the time. Your nerves are feeling numbness. This is just a way to help you recover from these conditions. So once you fix the thyroid, it's perfect. And for those people who are trying to lose weight, anytime you try to lose weight, even with healthy keto and fasting, and you reach a point, there's a stagnation, that plateau phase. This is the time for you to start fixing the thyroid. So two things, the thyroid and the adrenals. These are the things that will bring you stagnation in weight loss. So once you fix your thyroid, weight loss continues, and you lose healthy weight in a steady way. So not unless there's any question for me, I rest my case. Unless there's somebody who has requested something, thank you. Next time, kindly talk of sickle cell anemia. Yeah, hopefully. How about okra dog, the vegetable, eat it and enjoy it? Let's make it organic. Can one drop the thyroid gland, the thyroid drugs? Yes, you can drop it. Just fix the diet. But you can't drop those drugs if you've not fixed anything. You need to actually ask the question, can I start by eating healthy and then drop my drugs? Yes, you start fasting, eating healthy, then drop the drugs. Same to people who have diabetes and hypertension. How can someone get help after thyroid has been removed through surgery? This is a serious one, engineer. This is a bad one uh, because I don't believe surgery fixes anything. Surgery is just a way of extracting money from you. So uh, unfortunately, they have been removed, so we cannot do anything about it. But you can always fix your diet. Okay, The body has always a way of compensating. So what you do is just concentrate on what I just said you should eat. Okay, Eat healthy keto, start fasting, lose weight if you have high weights, because now when you remove them, you have low hormone, so you'll add weight. So fix the weight, fix the insulin by fasting and eating healthy keto, no carbohydrates generally, enjoy your salt in plenty, enjoy your seafoods. That is how you do that, bro. Please recap relationship between insulin resistance and estrogen dominance. Yes. Now, estrogen and insulin are both uh, anabolic hormones. They build things. So, for example, estrogen in a woman's uh, uterus, it will build things called fibroids and the cancer. <laughs> insulin on the other side stores fat, glucose in the form of fat and stores it in the cells. So, they are all anabolic hormones. Okay? So, when you have high insulin level, you, you've been eating carbohydrates because remember, the sources of insulin are carbohydrates. They are the same, same sources of estrogen. So estrogen comes from fat, estrogen comes from processed carbohydrates, estrogen comes from soy products, estrogen comes from GMO and glyphosate. So these are the same, same sources for insulin. So when you have high insulin in the system, you get insulin resistance. That is the reason why you get obese. And when you get obese, you start getting estrogen because estrogen comes from the fat. So when you have high insulin, you have high estrogen. That means you have low thyroid hormones. So that is the relationship. And estrogen dominance is the major cause of problems in women. Menstrual problems, obesity, uh, infertility, PCOS, cysts, cervical and breast cancer. <laughs> All these issues of reproductive health in women come or hail from estrogen dominance. So what you need is you need to lower that estrogen to a level that it will match the progesterone. So progesterone will now start because the role, the role of progesterone, apart from just helping you maintain a pregnancy and get fertility, it is the one that masks or basically neutralizes the symptoms, negative symptoms of estrogen. So when progesterone goes down and you let is, uh, estrogen go up, that is estrogen dominance. So you'll have all the issues with reproductive health in women, including acne, the cystic acne. So once you lose insulin, you will lose estrogen because you lose the fat. You lose estrogen, estrogen. Sorry. Once you lose estrogen, everything just goes back to normal, including women with postmenopausal syndrome. Just goes back to normal, and they enjoy their their hundred years in peace. I didn't understand the stagnant part. Yes, the stagnant part means when you start losing weight, even with healthy keto, then you reach a point. Most of those who have tried to lose weight, they will tell you there comes a time when your your weight loss stagnates. So this is the point when you need to even go harder on the healthy keto and fasting because at that moment in time, the body is trying to adapt. 
okay, on the new diets and new uh, lifestyle. So you need to give and go harder on more fasting and more keto so that you fix your adrenals and fix your thyroid. Once you fix those two, your weight loss continues. So when you stagnate, it's time to realize, hey, maybe my adrenals have a problem or my thyroid has a problem. So it's time to fix it through more fasting and more uh, keto, basically zero carbohydrate diet. I keep clearing my throat, especially when fasting. Is it a cause of alarm? Yes, it can be a cause of alarm, but again, there's that ketotic symptoms. When you get into ketogenesis or autophagy, and then you get a ketotic flu and ketotic symptoms, sometimes you can clear your throat. But clearing your throat means basically maybe sometimes when you break your fast. You know, most of you, you use fasting to help you clean your system every time. So you eat bad foods, then you fast. So you just say, you know, at the end of the day, I just, I'll just fast. Let me eat these cakes. Let me eat these pizzas. See, I'll fast the weekend. You'll, you'll have all these problems. Actually, fasting is supposed to clear all those issues with gut and reflux disease and stuff. But when you eat bad diets and then you use that, uh, use fasting to help you <laughs> uh, come back on track, it will be a serious problem. So yeah, it can cause that. But again, the larger part is not about the fasting, it's about the diets that you've been eating. Mm -hmm. Well, so I hope I answered most of questions. So let me talk to somebody here, maybe two, three people. I'll give a maximum of five people and then we close it down because today we need to rest. It's already 10. Yes, Sika, Sika Chepa. Is, is Ugali good? Ugali is zero nutritional value. When you talk about zero carbohydrates, we mean zero carbohydrates. Ugali is a carbohydrate. Why would you eat Ugali? Ugali has zero nutritional value. Sika Chepa. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm okay on you, Doc. I'm doing fine. Okay. Talk to me, how was your day? Um, I, no, the day was fine. Mm, are you eating? I'm eating, though I've stopped now. Mm. I, I just want to appreciate you. Okay. For what you have been doing. Thank you, sir. Um, I've been into weight loss journey mm -hmm. for two years now. Okay. Yeah, I was weighing 130 kgs. Okay. So I started I started my weight loss journey. Uh -huh. Then uh, I started fasting. Yeah. When I was starting, uh, you know, the people's perception is uh, when you start, there were a lot of advisors who say you, you have cancer. Yeah. You're going to develop ulcers. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I kept on. Mm -hmm. Not until I on TikTok I bumped on your video. Okay. Which gave me a lot of encouragement. Oh wow. By then I was when I reduced from one third, then I came to eighty seven mm -hmm. pages. Okay. After eighty seven pages, mm -hmm. I got stuck. Yeah. Because I was somehow, mm -hmm. uh, yes, I was somehow uh, eating carbohydrates and sugar, trying to trying to avoid yeah. what people are saying. You say you are going to develop ulcers and mm -hmm. the like. Mm -hmm. So when I bumped on your video, it gave me encouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, since I bumped on your video, now it's almost a month plus. I was eighty-seven. Mm -hmm. Now I'm seventy-seven. Woo! I've lost 10 more, yes. This is amazing. This is amazing, bro. Congratulations for that, bro. Yeah. Thank you very much. I also Thank appreciate you and you are doing a great job. It has wow. helped me. I was nobody because even my legs were swelling yeah. at that time. But now I'm able to fit in each and every cloth I want. I can go bro. into a boutique and buy everything I want. Bro, 130 kgs so all the way to 77. That is a whole... Hey, hey, this congratulations, bro. You deserve it. Yes, 77. I think uh, at least I have somebody now we can hit 100 years together. So, welcome <laughs> to the Century Nation. Yeah, yeah, I'm really following your programs. Yeah, even yesterday I missed you. The testimonials for the live testimonials. Yeah, I'll, I'll. I've watched the whole video today. The whole day I was with it. It took some hours for me, but yeah, it took my time also to enjoy. Yeah. People are testifying. 
you, you, yeah, you, I'm very much interested. I'm following each and every teachings. Thank you so much, bro. Sure, I appreciate. By the way, I'm I'm from Zambia. Ah, no wonder I hear the accent. I was no. almost asking you from Uganda. Yeah. You know, that's Zambia. No, 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 it's Zambia, yeah. Keep spreading our gospel in Zambia, bro. Keep saving people in Zambia. Sure, I think to keep it up, bro. You are saving lives. I appreciate you, bro, for coming through. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Ah, now I'm starting to understand that uh, TikTok has really made a whole difference when it comes to people living healthy. Because, hey, you know, sometimes, like on YouTube, they will step on every video that is controversial, that doesn't follow guidelines. And we just said yesterday that nowadays, clinical reasoning has been overwhelmed and uh, nobody, no doctor reasons anymore. It's all about the guidelines, guidelines. And these guidelines are made by a specific people, a committee of experts who are fat, who are bees and popping pills, and then they're sitting on a table, taking allowances and drinking soda. Then they write down guidelines. They get their allowance and walk out. They don't care about you. What makes you think they'll care about you if they don't care about themselves? Then they write these guidelines, and now WHO wants everybody to follow their guidelines. They also want to all things that we share on our YouTube to be approved by them. So they just want one channel, and that's how the matrix controls people. They want one channel of information so that everything that comes from WHO is what you should consume. But we've been following all these guidelines all through, but we've never been okay. People have been taking these guidelines for diabetes drugs, for hypertension drugs, for cancer, for all this, and nobody gets a remission from these diseases. So it's high time we just have alternative medicines. This doesn't make sense at all. I appreciate this gentleman for coming through. That is Zambia in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is so interesting. Good. Somebody called Da. I can see your comments all the time, Da, but you're not requesting to come in. I want to see you in, Da. Where is Da? Yeah. Da, 94, Da, where are you? Uh, my thyroid was partly removed, but I dropped levothyroxine medicine after clean diet and drinking cloves water. That is Glorin Turibi. I had a classmate in high school called Marvin Turibi, a Meru guy. I think he's now in Mombasa or Coast something. Very good tall guy, a basketballer. And Turibi Glory. My thyroid was partly removed. But I dropped levothyroxine because it was useless. Medicine after clean diet and drinking clove water. You might ignore it, but listen to her. Yeah, just when she thought that it's the end of the world, just when she thought that the surgery was the best option, she realized, no, I'm not, I was not designed to take these drugs for a lifetime. Come on. My body was not designed to take drugs for a lifetime. This is so interesting. So interesting. How can I fix cold intolerance? I think kakwasi, that one people will tell you here. How to fix cold intolerance? Cold intolerance, we already said, and I think people will tell you. I'll read the answers from TikTok and YouTube also. Cold intolerance, what is, this is the symptom of what? From this discussion, if you picked up anything, where did you classify cold intolerance? So somebody feeling so much cold, where did we classify it? I will tell you the answers, Kakwasi. Don't worry. These people know it already. I have very bright, bright uh, audience, and they question every single thing. They even question uh, so many things about what I say, and I like it. I like it when I'm questioned, because you make me wake up. How can I fix cold intolerance? Good answers coming from TikTok, definitely, as usual. Listen, if you have cold intolerance, you're already into hypothyroidism. So what you need right now is to fix your thyroid. And if you've not watched this video, you should go back and just enjoy the video. It's one minute, one hour, 34 minutes. You will get how to fix thyroid. Just fix the gut, enjoy healthy keto, start fasting, basically. So yeah, where is this uh, DA94? 
uh, let me talk to on two properties as I wait for DA94. DA94, kindly, if you're still here, kindly request. I think I've seen your stuff and I'm being advised to take you in so that you have something to tell us. How to fix GUT? That is an open question. They will tell you in the comment section. Don't worry. Fixing the GUT. Anto? Yes, Doc. Yes, Anto Properties. How are you? Fine, thank you. How was today? My day was perfect, bro. How was yours? Mine was a bit hectic. Yeah. I told you yesterday I was running some uh, tests today. Yeah. Unfortunately, I got some. Some I'm still waiting for them to be sent okay. by my mail. Okay. So I will have that discussion uh, tomorrow. No problem. You just make I'll sure. Send you all the results. Yeah, just make sure when they land in. I was actually waiting for them. So when they land in, just send them on my WhatsApp. And then we will have a serious discussion about that. I'll definitely do that. So I might I might delay because tomorrow I'm I, I should be traveling to some place. So, but when I settle immediately, I'll be able to give you a good call. Okay, by around, uh, let me say by latest 11. Okay. You should, uh, uh, you should be having them. No problem. Yes, yes. My name is just to thank you. Yeah. For the good job that you have been doing. Just to appreciate you, man. You have been saving life. Man, I appreciate that. You know, you, even your voice tells it all. And I just, I hear that and I'm like, damn, I, I might be doing the right thing here. <laughs> You've done a good job, Doc. You know, you know the first time I started oh, these things, I, I wasn't so much uh, deeper into it. I was just, actually, I, I have that ability to start breaking things down in a way that somebody can understand it so easily. So I used to make these stories to my colleagues all the time and somebody just told me hey bro why don't you just share these things because you are making us think differently about healthcare so why don't you just share this and see how people react to it and i shared one video and then boom we are here now let me tell you the testimony that uh, the, the, you know uh, i was actually thinking of this because you decided to give us this uh, information for free yeah and I, unfortunately i became a Brand ambassador here outside here. Yeah. If at all you are selling this information to us, I could make I could be one of the people who could make making fortunes from you because I could not have given those information for free. Yeah, bro. I could be buying them and selling them too. And and, and I think uh, let me tell you an interesting story. Somebody somebody from a certain company that's very common here on TikTok that sells supplements. Actually used my information to lose weight, and then now she's actually using her body weight to sell this product and sell, telling people that these products are the ones that help me lose this weight. Can you imagine that? You know, I, uh, well, today when I was in hospital, hmm. I saw uh, a, a live video yeah. of a certain lady. Try to convince people CG of green tea, CG what, mm -hmm. and uh, some other skin care products. And you just take uh, a uh, 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 nice keto with you. Really and drink uh, uh, any salty water. Uh, uh, water with just a pinch of salt. And, uh, and uh, fast. Your skin will just glow. I wish they knew. I wish they knew. You don't need any product. You don't need any skin care. And, those, and they buy those you things. Don't need any bro, they buy those things expensively. And when I ask somebody for fifteen hundred for consultation, they tell me, Ah, doctor, oh, you know, you know, you know, I am a follower of viewers on TikTok. I also follow your content on YouTube. But doctor, so it's like somebody who subscribes to my channel now. Uh, I I become indebted to them that I have. <laughs> I have put out information that is so helpful to people, and then somebody just comes with the guts and tells me, you know, I've been following you, Dr. Ari, and uh, I appreciate you for your work. And then they ask the question, but Dr. Ari, I'm like, okay, okay, okay. If you've been following me, you already know how to fix the skin. That is being so unfair to you, because the information that you are giving us here is free. So when you ask for a consultation fee, which is that cheap, 1500 
don't need someone to be asking up again. Give it. That is where you grow up and say, if you can't do that, eh? Watch out. 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 You cannot, you cannot be doing everything for free. You also have a life. You yeah, have bro. place to cater for as well. True, bro. Bro, I, I, I uh, unlike, unlike most people who follow me here, at least this information is available. I had, I had to experiment with myself. I had to lose weight for me to understand that these things can really work. So I had to do it on my own with my own motivation and discipline. To lose that weight and then i realized this is working so let me try it with these people in my family and then bro look at okay. us now look at us where we are right now man say i told you yesterday i can't imagine how i'm feeling you know weighing over 100 kg is not a joke hey bro that is intense <laughs> 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 Just to, to take a staircase to first floor. Yeah. Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> are aching, mgongo in uma, and and fa- and you are in denial. You don't want to admit that this that, that I want to lose weight. You're just in denial. Yes, and I'm wondering I'm meeting with people and I'm the problem. What's the problem? I need the problem is you. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I only get to borrow the shit down. Mm-hmm. Anyway, bro, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming through. I want you to please don't fail to send me that thing tomorrow, bro. Please don't. I'll definitely do that, dog. I don't know if Kenya and South Africa has got that narrative that Nikua, no, no, Nikua, and Fesa. That bullshit should get off. Do you know it's not even, even Africa alone, bro, even the West? How is it possible that a country that has 40% of its population are obese and overweight and with chronic conditions is the same same country that dictates how we should eat? It's the same same country that writes down diabetic guidelines and nutrition guidelines for us. And then our serious nutritionists and our serious medical practitioners are so hooked in the rectum of that uh, guideline that they cannot even think outside the box. That's the reason why you have a fat doctor putting on a tie, almost choking, heavily breathing. Then when you walk out, he puffs a cigarette and then takes a pill for high blood uh, cholesterol levels. And then goes ahead, takes another pill for erectile dysfunction. So your doctor starts a game at two nil down. How will he even help you? You know, I was wondering, after having so many videos and... Uh, here on TikTok and on YouTube. Right? Yeah. I was wondering, did you guys go to the same school that Dr. Cousin in our hospitals? <laughs> we might have gone through the same school, but some of us sat near the window. <laughs> yeah. The information we get here, the information that we get from you, you can't get any it anywhere from any doctor, even the person you trust the most is after your money. But do you know, bro? That is why I've been telling you I have those people. Do you know, I was actually part of that system. That's the interesting part. Number one, I went through that school and I understand that every student is not looking at understanding medicine or even pharmacy. All of us are just looking at getting a pass. We want to pass, graduate, and just go into the field and make money. That is the mindset of the students. And then there is too much theory than there is practice. So you are so loaded with these medical jargons, you're, you're these cramming words and stuff, and biochemistry does not make even sense. So you just want to get out of this system. And then when you come out, you get mentors who went through the same system. And these mentors on your internship, they just want to, they, they don't care about the patient. They just know. Well, can I the title the doctor? Once you call me doctor, ah, everything is just working for me. So they mentor these students or these interns, and then this, these people go ahead and just regurgitate the silly advice. So basically, they are conveyor belts of misinformation. 
So, so I was that person. Imagine. Imagine I was that doctor whose father was diabetic and my mother was arthritic. Myself, I was pre-diabetic and obese, and I'm there advocating for these drugs for diabetes and weight loss. I was actually an advocate for those surgeries and stuff. So I knew this was the only option. I was an advocate for the kids for H. pylori. I knew this was the solution because I was in denial and I was part of the system. So I understand where most doctors are. And that's why when I just put out the truth, even most of them get surprised because they are wondering, why is this, why is this guy getting this information from me? And then they're thinking I'm fighting them. But the reality is, even when I was in a medical school, I used to question like a drug like metformin or insulin. I used to wonder, where we are taking blood sugars from the blood, where to? Where are we taking this where sugar? To if, I, yeah, where? if I told this sugar is dangerous to the system and we are getting it from blood, where are we depositing it then? If it's not coming out of from urine, it's not going anywhere else, where are we taking it to using this insulin? So I used to question these things, but then when you ask that question, then your, your, your doctor lecturer becomes a little angry and you know you want a pass, so you don't want to cross their roads. So now you... <laughs> so you're treating the symptom and not the disease. That is how it is. That's how the syllabus has made us believe. That's how we have been brainwashed to think in one direction so that we brainwash those who are following us. I, uh, I was thinking uh, this uh, today. I'll make some t shirts, a very nice one, with yeah. this logo of yours, if you allow me. Yeah. That says the doctors are. Don't over trust them. Don't over trust them. This, they, they don't know anything. You know much about them. Actually, listen to this. You pay one million shillings plus for university fees for your child. Only for that child to come out and kill you. <laughs> You, you even bribe you even bribe the county government to employ your son or your daughter as a doctor and then your son goes to the supermarket and shops seed oils and wheat products then brings to you in the village <laughs> and then the same same son is the one who will bring you free insulin <laughs> <laughs> and then when somebody's here, somebody's here asking you for 1500 for a lifetime information to change your son's mind. You're busy telling that guy, you know, my son is a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, where did we go wrong? I think it's time for us to sleep, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure talking to you, bro. <laughs> hey, <laughs> where? Uh, <laughs> where do I love this man, bro? <laughs> where think they happen? Where think they happen? <laughs> How can you take a whole 1.5 billion, <laughs> take take your son to school and waste seven to eight years? Hey. Just cramming, just cramming, cramming to, to only come out and tell people fruits are healthy and they, they don't even know what why fruits are healthy. Why don't you tell you take antacids and fasting will kill you? Yet they've studied biochemistry and muscle physiology. They even tell you drink puji to get breast milk. Ah, that honey is going to help you in healing the cough. Ah. <laughs> uh, bro. <laughs> Glow, glow bay. <laughs> glow, are you surprised to be here or something? Glow, glow, glow found herself here without uh, knowing why she's here. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Well, let me do three more people and then we go and sleep. Today we're having an easy day. We have had enough. We have talked about the thyroid. It's so complicated, but we've tried to make it easy. We want to sink it in so that when you explain it to somebody out there, 
they actually look at you and say, hey, Daktari. <laughs> and deep inside, you're just knowing, hey, yeah, Daktari, who? <laughs> Daktari for who? <laughs> but the content that you're putting on here, ah, you're a real Daktari. <laughs> so I'm going to do uh, this gentleman, and then I do Olara, and then Miki, and then we close it up. <laughs> Hey, chairman. Yes, talk. What is wrong with your background? There's so much noise, bro. Uh, I don't know what is my air condition. Maybe probably it's the air condition. Oh, okay. Okay. Is it better now? Yeah, 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 yeah. If, if I talk, uh, uh, God bless you, wherever you are. Thank you, thank you. In fact, uh, I don't know how it happened, but I've always thanked my staff for, for knowing you. Yeah. Yeah, I used to battle with this uh, chronic uh, hypertension mm -hmm. uh, since uh, 2019. Okay. But uh, one month ago, I, I chanced upon one of your videos on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I, I started taking your, your, your health coaching seriously. Yeah. And uh, I, I made a lot of dietary changes mm -hmm. since then. Yeah. And uh, I can say for almost one month now, I've stopped taking the BP medication uh, and my BP is coming back to normal. Awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's difficult for me. In fact, thank you so much, Doc. It's, uh, I'm currently an expert in Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. It's quite difficult. I'm a Ghanaian. I'm a Ghanaian, actually. Okay. Uh, it's quite difficult for me trying to eat what I want to eat here at the camp. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying my best yeah. to avoid uh, these carbohydrates mm -hmm. and uh, these uh, seed oils. Yeah. So I'm doing my best, combining with uh, intermittent fasting, uh, uh, 8 hours, 16 hours, and then 30 hours. Yeah, sure. And in fact, for the first time, I feel so amazing. Yeah. But I feel so excited about my health. Thank you so much, Dr. Lewis. Man, I appreciate you so I appreciate you for that, bro. I, I have a very big following in Ghana, and I'm just I'm just excited that there's someone from Ghana who is in Sierra Leone and is practicing what we are doing. Keep saving yourself, bro. Hypertension is reversible, and you will never regret this one, bro. You will never. Uh, I'm a testimony. Yeah. I cannot keep telling my colleagues and friends that it, 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 it is reversible because. I'm feeling it now. I have my monitor every morning. I check. Yeah. And my BP is coming back to normal without medication for almost a month now. Perfect. Without medication. Keep doing what you're doing, bro. That's just exercising. It's just exercising, mm -hmm. dirty change. It's just dirty change. Yeah. Exercising and then fasting. In fact, in fact, there's no day that I don't watch your video. Honestly, there's no day I don't watch your video. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Doc. Uh, <laughs> let me leave you. Let me leave you to 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 have to enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you so much. Doc. I, I appreciate uh, you for coming the, through. I, I will come and look for you in Kenya. Wherever <laughs> you are, I will come and look for you. I appreciate you, bro, for coming through. Thank you so much, bro. That is the vibe. <laughs> that is the vibe, ladies and gentlemen. That makes me feel like a real doctor now. Of course, I am. Good. But the best part about being a doctor is changing a life. The best part about being a doctor is not the salary or the paycheck. It's not about the following, no. It's about you changing a life. That's what we're designed to do. That is what we both for. But we forget so easily. Once the money comes in, we forget so easily. We start even competing about job groups. You know, an MO is earning this much. You know, a nurse is earning this much. Do you know a farm tech and a pharmacist are different? Do you know an MO and the CEO? A CEO is doing so many, so much work and he deserves more pay. It's always about the money. Come on. You're a team. Olara. Uh, good, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, sir. I hope my voice is not, you are hearing clearly because I just, uh, Last week, I, I went through the doctor, the doctor made they removed that thing out of <laughs> And I wish I had your video earlier than that. Uh, the one you just talked about? Yep. Uh, uh. 
No problem, sir. Uh, we always have our way out. Yes? Uh, but it was, uh, the CT scan was, the thing was so big and it's already penetrating my chest. It was three inches inside my chest. Mm -hmm. So they told me it's already affecting some vessels to distributing blood to the brain and something like that. Mm. Uh, so they gave me my options. It's, but luckily it was benign. Okay. So the surgery went on well. I woke up uh, an hour later after the surgery. Mm -hmm. No pain completely. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, there was no inflammation. Mm -hmm. I was just given... Basically, I was given calcium supplement mm -hmm. to use it for a month. Calcium again? Yeah, they gave me, because I suspect me of the, the thyroid, mm. I may face some uh, calcium deficiency, which can cause some numbness and stuff like that. So they gave me for a month, then to come and check it out. Mm. After a month, they'll come and check, uh, the, by that time, the result of the actual thyroid, which was taken to the lab to check if they the growth was uh, cancerous, maybe about that, because I was having my two needle uh, goiter. Yeah. So what, the biggest needle, they took support for me, but it was benign. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I went to the surgery, the surgeon gave me two options. I made it either came from there, my voice will be gone, mm -hmm. or I use calcium production in the system. Well, always selling fear, okay. So... The voice was there after the surgery immediately. Mm -hmm. And the calcium, the blood after the surgery, the blood, the calcium was well good in the blood. But they, they just give me multivitamins with a lot of stuff to okay. use. But there's no antibiotics, no nothing, no nothing. Did they tell you anything about dietary modifications? Dietary, they didn't, did not speak about that. Maybe now when I'm going for to remove the stitches now, maybe they'll give me some the guidance. But I've taken, I've taken it about, about myself. Mm. I've been fasting, eating, trying to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, I lost almost 12 kilograms before I went for the surgery. Mm -hmm. So that got me worried because my wife also does this, uh, those fasting stuff. She, she introduced me into fasting yeah. around four months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, that will, I think that what led me to lost the weight. I don't, I don't think it's the zero itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, but the CT scan shown that that thing was uh, pushing my track hair. Mm -hmm. I was having problem breathing. Yeah. And also it caused a lot of snoring at night. Yeah. So the doctor told me, you are this dangerous. I don't just give you that. I, I We recommend we remove it because now because it's interfering with your breath. Mm. It may cause other stuff that we don't, we don't like to go over there. Yeah. And uh, since the snoring and the stuff was there for, for almost 12, 14 years, mm -hmm. which led me to suspect that I was having this problem longer than when was diagnosed. Was diagnosed. So this is how we are now here. Yeah? No. There's no, they just give me calcium supplement, nothing else. No thyroid, anything, no anything for thyroid. There was a time we talked about calcium supplements and we said calcium supplements are non-absorbable and even if though they are, they are absorbed, they cannot be assimilated in the body. So it's a serious problem. So I would, I would actually prefer after you come out from, uh, from, from that checkup, yes. I would like you to just hit me on WhatsApp so that I can send you a whole dietary modification for you to just fix your diet like completely and go hard on it, okay? Yeah, because uh, Thank you, because those supplements, the multivitamin, there's nothing like multivitamin. Vitamin exists in diets. So those tablets that have, they have combined synthetic vitamins in one tablet, and then they deal with these multivitamins the rest of your time. So I would like you to go for that checkup afterwards, send me the results, and then uh, I will give you a whole data modification okay. so that you can just change your life completely. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, I hope the decision to take it out was correct. Anyway, it's already done. Yeah, it's already done, so we can't, we, we, can't, we can't redo it. So, yeah, for now, we have to fix what we have already and then move ahead. Thank you again. I'm addict. I will listen to you, Pat Janet. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't understand. Uh, nowadays, it's just quite awkward. And if you understand how the matrix plays, <laughs> you will get to understand so much of these things. And you will see them from the other side as you stand this side. For instance, 
I remember the like before I put up the video about insulin, the video that was pulled down for hitting a million. I think they get they got threatened a little bit. Our lives used to go up to around two thousand people. And then all of a sudden, boom, below five hundred, now below two hundred. We are not complaining about that. We understand how the matrix operates. So don't be surprised that you can stick here all this time. Nothing is happening. We are okay. The only thing that you need to do if you're in these lives, always encourage somebody to join in. If they refuse, that is up to them. Also, if you have a chance to share these live videos on YouTube with those people who need it, we will highly appreciate. That is one way of just appreciating what we do. Okay? That is also one way of saving somebody who will feel indebted to you and you never know how you can change lives. Not all of us are blessed with this type of information. Not all of us are blessed with this type of brains to share so much deep information about life and health healthcare. But you can always change somebody's life through changing, through sending them these videos. Let's, let's be generous. Okay? We have chosen to share this information for free, so let's share it for free. Let them... Let them try and hit us hard, but when all this information is already in the hands of the people, please save those people. Anybody who needs this, if you have somebody who needs health information, my YouTube and my Telegram channels are free of charge. They are open and they are dense, just like nutrient-dense foods. They are dense with information that concerns healthcare and medical conditions. Please go to my YouTube channel, Health and On The Spot, subscribe. Uh, comment there, share those videos, like them, let them spread wide. One day we'll come here with the, with all that it takes. We will do what we can, never to uh, go against the oath that we've taken. So we'll give this information every other time when we have the chance to. So play your part as I play mine. Let me give it to you and you share it because that's the only way you can help, that's the only way you can you can push us to even do better. But thank you so much. Let me take in last call from Mickey, then we call it a night. Because I wanted to talk to Da94, but Da then ran away. And uh, for my people on TikTok, thank you so much for those of you who are already uh, sharing these videos, giving us, uh, doing duets with these videos. Do anything with these videos. Also, thank you for giving us the, those gifts. When we withdraw that money, we feel so good. <laughs> so we feel... <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for the gifts. Thank you so much for being part of this live for all you can. My YouTube channel is Health and Wellness Sport. Health and Wellness Sport. So be there. Mickey, also my Telegram handle is still Health and Wellness Sport. Go to Telegram, download that app, search Health and Wellness Sport. You can also search Dr. Lewis Mochile. It is there. Health and Wellness Sport, all on Telegram and on YouTube. Don't miss out. Yes, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if my YouTube is hanging or something. My people on YouTube, are we okay? Audrey, ah, not Audrey. Uh, Mickey. Yes, that's I'm doing fine. Okay, I have some few questions here. When you say some few, I always look at ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not ten. Go ahead. I just give it four. Hmm. Now, uh. About uh, thyroid, uh, apart from that, what else uh, could possibly cause uh, thyroid problems? Apart from what? Diet. Yeah, I mentioned so many things. I told you about uh, uh, the halogens. Were you here when I was talking about that? The halogens, cigarette smoking, uh, alcohol. I put about that. I guess I talked about stress. I talked about a leaky gut, which is basically dietary. So most of these things, even the halogens are getting from, uh, we get them from the diet. I talked about hormonal contraceptives. Did you miss out on that? Yeah. Yeah, those are the, those are the other causes for the thyroid problem. And even cancer. You know, I'm, I'm asking this because I don't <clears> know how often it is to children, but <clears> I guess they also get it. Yeah, everybody can get thyroid problems. Uh, but uh, you see, how common is it in children? But it's so hard to diagnose thyroid problems in children unless they have a swollen uh, gland. So hard to diagnose. Because remember, children's heart rates are high. That is one. Number two, children's skin can be messed yeah. up with diet. And then if a child has low IQ, we always associate it to 
the pharynx. We don't associate it to the thyroid. So I think we cannot even put the prevalence in children as such or as much because nobody has ever taken good time to do uh, these examinations in children. That's why the cases of children are very low. But just like in men, it's not like the cases are low. It's just like women go more to the hospital to complain about the symptoms and therefore it becomes easy to, to run a diagnosis on them. But for children, they cannot complain about... If you see a child having a fever and low energy, what do we do? We write an antibiotic, we write a paracetamol, and then we write a, an antihistamine. Yeah. Yeah, because we assume that this is not a, uh, this is not a disease for children. Okay. Mm. And then uh, <clears throat> uh, for a for case of hypothyroidism, mm -hmm. let's say someone has difficulty in losing weight. Mm -hmm. How long will this person take to realize that uh, this weight is not going down and is due to hypothyroidism? What if I tell you 3,000 days? Will you now stop eating healthy because 3,000 days seem to be very far? No. Yeah, that means focusing on how long it will take is not as important as focusing on fixing the kitchen. So again, in this channel, you know, we always fix what is important. Miki, okay. what is important and what is? Yeah. Three things. What is true? Uh -huh. What is important? What is true? What is... Uh... What is important? What is true? Yes, and then <laughs> what is urgent? Yes, or immediate, but you read the comment. I didn't want you to read the comments. We always focus on what is important, what is immediate, and what is true. So what is important is you have to fix the kitchen. What is immediate is do it now. <laughs> there's no tomorrow. So there's it's not it's never about uh, how long will it take? It's about how how soon did you start? Okay. Yeah, so you just start so, and then so whatever the happens, last, let it happen. Uh -huh. The last question. Uh, are, are the people having a thyroid uh, problems always having an enlarged snake? Which thyroid problems? Because we have hyper and hypo, and both of them have an enlarged thyroid. So you can even have you can even have uh -huh. thyroid problems without necessarily having an enlarged neck. Okay. Yeah, that becomes to the extreme ends. Okay? So basically, so so to diagnose hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism, mm -hmm. you have to go to the hospital. Yes, you have to go to the hospital. How do you know about the TSH and T4 <clears throat> without going to the laboratory? Oh, okay. Mm. It's a uh, it's a new topic to me. Uh, I know I pour I pour, but I did not them in details. It's a deeper one. So it's a deeper piece. one. I actually yeah. just tried to make it look simple and, and, and understandable, but it's a deeper one. Yeah, because you see, uh, for us, yeah. for us mm -hmm. in our class, I don't know about yours. In our class, we are only uh, the, the disease is just defined. Mm -hmm. You are given the symptoms. Yeah. Then the nutritional management, not even the nutritional treatment management. Mm -hmm. So most of these diseases we know uh, a few things because in our side we are not we are not supposed to know even the science. What we are supposed to know is just what is the condition and what is the nutritional treatment. Just that. Yeah, and now you understand why I always insist on nutrition as the backbone of healthcare, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I think. I think most of the nutrition syllabus is skewed and is just rushed through so that it can benefit the big pharma and the food industry. But the reality is if you're a true nutritionist and you are you are a practicing nutritionist and not part of the industry, <clears throat> you're part of healthcare, not industry, you start to understand the details and deeper meanings of healthcare. And that's what we want. So yeah, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad too. Mm. Uh, I like it here. You're welcome always. Thank you. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, Miki. Uh, that was interactive. I appreciate you for always being part of our lives. Now, tomorrow we won't have any live. Not even on Friday, not even on Saturday, not even on Sunday. <laughs> so yeah, I did a back-to-back -back live on Monday, yesterday and today for a reason. So yeah, do not stick uh, there waiting for me tomorrow to surface and then I miss and then you'll blame me when I come back. So yeah, 
Thank you so much, all of you, for being here. Uh, my YouTube people, I appreciate your questions. Uh, Doc, do you take insurance for those who would want to come for consultation? <laughs> <laughs> eh, 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 Kakwasi, your insurance will land you in serious trouble. Trust me, you. If I was uh, I was practicing on private practice and uh, consulting as much as you want me to do that, I would have actually taken your insurance without thinking twice. Because I would have double the prices of every test on that insurance and i'll drain that insurance and still ask you for more money so no thank you but however it's a good concern i only i only ask for 1500 for you to get to consult with me and i make sure i give you adequate attention for that 1500 so you'll be happy about that good so thank you so much for everybody for being part of us today was awesome i hope that if you've not understood anything you can go back on my youtube this video is on youtube go back and uh, take a chance to just I'm good at explaining these things in, a, in an easy way. So thank you for my YouTube people. It's always a pleasure having you around. I want to log out and then me hand out to TikTok back at 300,000. So yeah, thank you so much for being part of us. This is the Health and Wellness Court. And this is always your favorite doctor, Dr. Lewis Muchile. Sport. And this is always your favorite doctor, Dr. Lewis Muchile. Until next time, boom, share that live. Okay? Subscribe also if you've not and if you've been part of us. So Santeni.